everyone, I'm Daria. Today I'm gonna show you how to knit a dickie, your perfect cozy neck warmer for chilly days. Welcome back to Daria Crochet Life. On this channel I post knitting and crochet lessons, simple and not so simple tutorials on how to make different knitting and crochet projects. So if any of that interests you, please subscribe to my channel. All right, here you can see all the materials and tools that we'll need for today's tutorial. So first of all, let's talk about yarn. I decided to work with one of my favorite yarn brands. It's called Drops Nepal. I like this yarn because it's not expensive and uh, it has really, really nice content. So it is 65% wool and 35% alpaca. This yarn is very, very warm. It's a little bit itchy. So be careful if you are very sensitive. So maybe you need to take some other yarn. Uh, and in 50 gram ball, there are 75 meters. So if you uh, want to copy my um, tutorial exactly, so try to find uh, the yarn with the same uh, meters or it's, it is actually 82 yards or the same yards um, like mine. And then uh, you can have the same amount of stitches and rows. And if you're interested, my color is 0501. Um, I think I will need more than two balls. I have something else uh, in stash uh, and I will let you know right now exactly how much yarn I end up using. Uh, and for the needles, so this yarn is asking for five millimeter uh, needles and that's exactly what I'm gonna work with. Um, I have this circular five millimeter Chiago wooden needles um, and my wire is not that long because we don't really need uh, the longest uh, the longest wire. Uh, we will also need a measuring tape, a tapestry needle for weaving in ends um, at the end. My favorite type is this one with slightly bended tip. It's very comfortable to work with. We'll need scissors and we'll need um, a four markers. It would be easy if you pick um, um, two of each colors. Okay, we will start uh, by making a turtleneck. So we will work in rounds and we'll be doing two by two ribbon. So the pattern would be to knit, to purl, to knit, to purl. And in the next uh, round, you repeat on top of the knit, you do knit, on top of the purl, you do purl. So it's very easy. But the question number one is how many stitches we need to cast on. Uh, you really need to uh, find out your gauge if you're a little bit lazy and don't want to find your gauge, you can um, look on the label. And over here, um, if you're using the same size of the needles and you know that you are more or less um, average in terms of tension, so you're not too loose or not too tight, so you can use these numbers. Because for this project, for this dickie, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Um, so they have 17 stitches in 10 centimeters or in four inches. That means in one centimeter, we have 1.7 stitches. Uh, so then you need to um, decide how wide you want the turtleneck uh, to be and uh, take that amount of centimeters and multiply this 1.7 and you find out your uh, desired number of stitches but because it's this the pattern is very very stretchy two by two ribbon is very stretchy pattern and I don't think we want it to be very loose um, so that's why you need to eliminate some amount of stitches I will uh, cast on 80 stitches today. Um, yeah, that's based on my experience. This is a good number of stitches. <laughs> uh, all right, so you can use whatever cast on method you want. I will be using long tail cast on. So first I need to make a slip knot. Then I insert both of my needles into the uh, loop. I will be working, I'll be casting on with two needles together because I want my first um, um, beginning edge to be a little bit looser because it's around the neck. So I wanted to make sure that my head actually fit. Uh, and this is my short end and this is the um, end that's going to the ball. And when I'm casting on, I put the short end on my thumb and the working yarn is on the index. And then I'm casting on 80 stitches.
Yeah, and the total number of stitches should be divided by four. So if you will work with different yarn or your, your gauge is different, your tension is different, your needles are different, so you need to um, take the amount of stitches that will be divided by four because our beginning pattern is two by two ribbon um, and it requires us to have the number of stitches that is divided by four. Okay, I casted on 80 stitches, so now I need to make a knot with these two uh, yarn ends, like that. And the next step is to take away one needle, so be very careful over here. Always hold um, your bottom needle at, um, in front and pull the other needle, like that. Okay, so we're supposed to work in rounds, and if you feel comfortable, you can uh, join your work in rounds right away. Uh, I don't really like to do that. I like to do my first um, row flat, and then I join after that. Uh, so, as I said, our pattern is very, very easy. It is just to knit, to purl, and then you just start your pattern, uh, make two knit stitches and then two purl stitches then two knit stitches and two purl stitches be careful uh, try not to break the pattern and you should end up with two purl stitches all right so i finished my first row uh, and after that we need to join um, my stitches and I will work in rounds after that. Uh, because my wire is not that short and I'm sure a lot of you will have the same issue, so we will use um, a technique called magic loop. So that will allow us to work in smaller circumference but on bigger or lo on longer wires. Uh, all right, so we need to put our stitches like this with working yarn. Okay, let me find my working yarn. Working yarn is here. Working yarn should be at the back. Like this. So I move my stitches to the needle. Then the other side I put uh, together like this. Needle to needle, uh, stitch to stitch. Uh, fold my stitches in half. Somewhere in the middle, find uh, the wire and start making a loop like this. Just pull it and bring the front stitches to the wire like this. So that's your beginning position. And when you do all of this, make sure you're not twisting your stitches, especially over here, that it's all going um, like nicely and smoothly and there are no twists over there. Uh, once again, so this is my short end and the working yarn should go from the back needle. Then you can use a stitch marker right now and put it on, um, on your back needle if you want. So that would be your beginning of the row marker. But to be honest, for me, it's very, very confusing. Uh, this short end will show me the beginning of the row. I don't really need to use marker. Uh, I will take the back needle and start pulling it, moving the back stitches onto the wire. And then you see what I'm doing? I'm creating a loop with my right needle. So this is our beginning position. We need to have front stitches sitting on the needle, back stitches sitting on the wire, and then wire loop on uh, one side, like in the middle of the row, and wire loop on the other side at the beginning. And then we take the working yarn that's going from the back uh, stitches and you start uh, just working on, um, on your pattern. So as I said before, if you see knit stitch, you knit. If you see purl stitch, you purl. But the pattern will be to knit, to purl, to knit, to purl. And the first two would be knit stitches. Uh, if you're a continental knitter, it's, um, there are no issues at all. You just start knitting and that's it. But if you're an English knitter, let me show you actually English way. Because a lot of my English knitter students, they um, 
they struggle a little bit over here when we go from uh, one needle to another. So because we are starting the next stitch is neat, the working yarn should be at the back. And I put it like this at the back of my needle. And then I insert it into the next stitch. Okay. Uh, then yarn over and pull through. So when you do this, make sure you didn't do any unexpected yarn overs because uh, if you put your working yarn somehow differently, then you can end up with um, extra stitch. So just check yourself once in a while uh, and make sure you're not increasing uh, the total number of stitches. Okay, so now I'll be working to uh, the middle of the uh, round till this point to my um, wire loop. Coming closer to the uh, wire loop. Okay, finished my first half of the stitches. Then I'm turning my work. And right now back stitch is sitting on the needle and front stitches are on the wire. So I am taking this wire on the side, which is actually beginning at the beginning of the row. And I start pulling it and moving. Actually, I can move, push it from here. And I need to move my stitches from the front to the needle. Okay. So first move your stitches to the needle. And second, take the back needle and pull it to create another wire. And once again, this is our uh, beginning position. So we have wire here, wire loop there, uh, stitches in front on the needle, stitches at the back on the wire. And just keep working. And once again, be very careful at the beginning of the row uh, of this like transition from one needle to another. So you will not, oops, so you will um, not make extra stitches. Uh, and to be honest, that's it. When, when you come to this point, you do the same thing again. Uh, and you need to work like this for whatever amount of rows you want. I will be doing 40 rows, or maybe I'll do 40. 6, 45, uh, because I know that 40 rows would be around 21 centimeters long. Um, we'll see if, I, if I'll decide to do the turtleneck a little bit longer this time. I'll let you know. Okay, I'm finishing the second uh, round. All right, and then let me show you one more time what I'm doing. So I'm turning my work moving my front stitches to the wire uh, to the needle like this folding it folding it together and then taking the back needle and creating another loop and starting my next um, round so as i said in total you need to make 40 rounds and right now we did two uh, you can count uh, pearl stitches the amount of bumps will tell you exactly amount of rows so I did two one two or you can count your V's your knit stitches so one and two all right and I'll see you after I'll finish um, a turtleneck I finished my turtleneck, so I made 40 rows and I think that's that should be enough. It's pretty long and when I fold it in half and I try it on, and mm, this is exactly what I need. Uh, but as I said, you can make it shorter or longer, so it's up to you. Okay, so right now we will be doing... Um, next part, we'll be doing uh, shoulder increases. So, but before doing that, we need to um, put our markers in certain places. So, um, I'm going to mark, so this is my beginning of the row. I'm going to mark four stitches after beginning of the row. So, I'm taking one marker and putting it uh, four stitches, between uh, fourth and fifth stitch. Okay, it's a little bit too tight. All right, and then I will do the same thing on the other needle. So four stitches and I'll put a uh, same colored mark marker.
Okay, so this eight stitches, um, this is my shoulder. Then I need to count, um, like in total, I had 80 stitches around. So then I need to count uh, 40 stitches and then do the same thing over here. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly uh, the middle. So over here, I have 40 stitches from the very beginning. And that's why I can take my other colored marker and mark four stitches from the middle uh, and on the other side same four stitches like this okay so right now that's what we have this is my beginning of the round um, so beginning of the round is in the middle of one of the shoulder and for the shoulder we're leaving eight stitches these eight stitches we will work them in garter stitch so that means um one row we knit one row we purl one row we knit one row we purl and you alternate in like this so this eight stitches here and eight stitches there you work in garter stitch uh, at the same time in every row we'll be doing increases so here you should be very careful because we will be doing our increases outside of the shoulder so um, this first blue marker the first increase will go after the marker then before the pink marker then after the pink marker and before the blue marker so our markers always uh, marking just eight stitches we we will never move them all right now let me show you how i'm gonna do my increases uh yeah and you can do whatever increase you like but i think the best uh, would be to make make one right and make one left uh it doesn't really matter which one you will be doing on which side just um if you start doing make one right on this side then do make one left on the other side make one right make one left uh, or vice versa you can do make one left here and then you need to do make one right on the other side okay so the first four stitches that's our garter stitch shoulder and i will just knit this first four stitches then i'm slipping the marker and now i need to do my make one stitch i'll do make one right so i'll be using this piece of yarn that is in between two of my stitches uh, this one and I need to put it on the left needle like this so the left leg is um, in front and the right is at the back this is a position and then I need it as normal so I insert it like this this will create a stitch leaning to the right so that's make one right after that I need to the next marker to my pink marker i am uh, right before my next marker and now i need to do make one left so i'll be using the same piece of yarn and i put it the other way so right now the right leg is in front left is at the back like this and then i need the stitch through the back loop so i insert my right needle through the back and then i need it and that will create a stitch leaning to the left then i slip my marker and knit next four stitches turn my work do everything that i need to do for the uh, magic loop method and i knit the first four stitches and basically repeat the same thing what we did on the other side slip marker and do make one right make one right then knit to the next marker and then before the next marker i need to do make one left slip the marker and knit last four stitches then i'm turning my work and right now because i'm doing a garter stitch so right now i'll be purling 
uh, these shoulder stitches. So first four I'm purling. Then I need to slip the marker and I will do increase again. So here be very careful because we had increase in the previous round. So it may be a little bit tricky to see this piece of yarn that you need to use. It's actually the very, very first one. Um, so try to pull it and you see I'm pulling it. It is connected to this first stitch. So if you pull it and you see that the first stitch is moving, this is correct piece of yarn. Okay, we are doing make one right. So like this. Make one right. And then I need to the next marker. So basically you work like this uh, for, I think I'll work uh, for 16 rounds in total. This is my second round. Uh, but you can decide yourself uh, how long you want your shoulders to be. It, that depends on the size. Um, I'll let you know exactly how many rows I ended up making. Uh, over here in front and at the back, you just need all of your stitches. Um, do make one right, make one left um, after the marker or before the marker. And shoulder stitches you do in garter stitch. One row knit, one row purl, one row knit, one row purl. Okay, I'll see you after I'll finish all shoulders. Uh, when you come to a moment when you need to add another yarn ball, so let me show you what you need to do. Uh, leave a little bit longer end because it would be easy for you to weave it in later. So something like that uh, should be um, enough. And you put this uh, yarn end to the uh, left. So then you take the new yarn, uh, also leave a little bit longer end and put it to the right and join these two yarns together. And next three stitches work with two yarns together. Then you drop this old yarn, the short end here. This is my new yarn end and I continue with my new working yarn. And next, on the next round, these three stitches, they will be a little bit bulky, so uh, that's okay. That's not going to be very noticeable. And when you work, make sure that you work in two, uh, two strands together, these three stitches. Okay, now I'll see you after you finish uh, shoulders. Okay, so I think I finished my shoulders. I did 16 rounds. And if we count over here, yeah, so that's, um, actually it's easy to count um, on front or uh, at the back. Uh, you just starting from this uh, bump, we don't count it. And then starting from that first V, uh, you can count your stitches and th um, this is how you count your rows. Uh, so I made 16 rows in total. I think that's enough, um, but you can uh, add or eliminate whatever amount of rows you think should be good. After that, we will split our work and we will um, work back and forth. So after this, we stop working in rounds. Uh, you can move um, your back stitches to the uh, waist yarn or to another uh, spare needles. But to be honest, I never do this. I just uh, keep them on the same needles and I just work with this um, front stitches and that's it. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, okay, so at the very beginning of each round, you will keep doing your garter stitch. So first four stitches and last four stitches would be a garter stitch all the time. So I am knitting them like usual. And that's why I will keep my uh, markers. Then I don't do any increases. So just knit to the next marker. Okay, then you need to slip the marker. Then work just on uh, four stitches one two three and four and then I turn my work 
and now I start working um, from the wrong side but first four stitches as I said will be uh, doing in garter stitch so I'm knitting first four stitches slip in the marker and then I need to purl to the next marker then I'm slipping the marker and next four stitches I am knitting so this uh, stitches you'll be always knitting first four and last four you always knit and in the middle one row knit one row purl so then I turn my work again this is my third row. Um, here I recommend you to keep track of uh, how many rows you're doing because we want the same amount of rows for the other uh, side. Okay, skip, slip in the marker and knit into the next marker. Yeah, and you keep working like this to desired lengths. And once again, I will let you know how many rows I ended up making. Um, but to be honest, it really, it's up to you. Uh, depending on how long you want it to be but keep in mind that uh, we will finish um, our rows like we're at the bottom we need to add a garter stitch so several rows would be a garter stitch so that's why when you um, like you knit and then you think oh maybe that's enough keep in mind there would be a little bit more so you need to stop a little bit before uh, your desired length Okay, I did 52 rows, including these uh, 16 rows that I did for the shoulder. So uh, from the turtleneck, from the this point, if you count, uh, that should be 52 or whatever amount you want. After this, I will make, I think I'll make eight rows, um, garter stitch. So I will be knitting in... Um, like I, I stop purling, I'll be knitting all of my stitches for uh, next eight rows. It's actually very, very easy. I don't even think I need to show you. Uh, just do, yeah, and we don't need markers anymore because we'll be knitting all of our um, stitches for eight more rows. So in total, from the very beginning, from the turtleneck, you need to make 60 rows. And then I'll show you how to cast off. That's what you're supposed to have after making eight um, neat rolls. And after that, we need to uh, bind off our stitches. So I will be uh, using my tapestry needle. Uh, and first thing that I need to do, I need to cut the yarn. And the length of the tail should be three times longer than um, the length of my uh, bind off uh, edge, uh, like around three times longer. Then thread this yarn end through the tapestry needle. And this uh, bind off is very, very easy. It is just two steps. So step number one, you need to insert your uh, tapestry needle uh, as if to purl through first two stitches. And you leave those stitches on the knitting needle like that. And then you insert your tapestry needle into the first stitch as if to knit and you drop it and pull through. And you repeat this two steps until you uh, close all the stitches. So first two stitches as if to purl, leave them on. And now one stitch as if to knit and slip it. As if to purl two stitches and you leave them. As if to knit first stitch and you slip it. Work like this until you um, close all the stitches. Okay, I have just two stitches left, so I'm doing my last uh, per, uh, pull through the two of them. Then I slip this one. And the very, very last one, I just slip as if to purl.
and because my um this yarn end i need to weave it in and since i already have a uh, tapestry needle attached so i can um, do it right now i like to weave in ends uh, from the wrong side uh, you need to find any loop that is very very close to the yarn end insert your needle under that loop and pull it through like this and then uh, you see this um, ridge of the pearl it looks like a little wave it has top and bottom bumps and I will use um, first I use top bump and then I use bottom bump and I pull it through and I repeat it uh, several more times and it's good if you change direction yeah and don't pull too much otherwise uh, it will not look nice okay now I want to go to the lower uh, ridge and I will change the, okay change direction and go to the opposite side you need to weave in the same way all of the yarn ends okay then then you can take scissors and cut uh, the yarn end like this this is what you should have after binding off uh, now we need to do the same thing on the other side and we have all of our stitches on the needle uh, if you had them on the waist yarn or spare needle so now you need to uh, move those stitches back to the working needle and uh, the first row would be uh, right side row so the one where you see these over here and I don't do any knots I just start knitting like normal so insert and start knitting and I leave a little bit longer and so it will be easy for me to weave in later uh, and you need to keep track of your rows so make sure that you have the same amount of rows no increases uh, you do garter stitch at the beginning and at the end and in the middle you do stock in a stitch so knit on right side and purl on the wrong side and you work like this for uh, 52 rows if we count from the turtleneck from here it should be 52 uh, rows and after that you need to do uh, eight rows of garter stitch so you repeat the same thing that we did for the other side and then you bind off the same way then you weave in all the ends and then you need to wash uh, and block this uh, piece it will look so much better after washing and I'll see you at the end of this video and I'll show you the final result I finished weaving in all the ends except for this um, last one actually it's our first uh, beginning yarn end because I want to show you what to do over here uh, maybe as you remember we started our first row uh, not in round so we work our first row flat and then we join that in round and right now at the very end you need to join this gap uh, so it will look it will look much better uh, it's very easy to do you thread the yarn through the tapestry needle and then just insert your needle into the uh, like base of the pearl stitch if you look from the right side and you pull it through like this and then you need to insert it back to the same spot where it was going out over here like that done so we actually kind of stitched it uh, together and then you can um, start weaving in but I like to do a little security knot so uh, let's say over here I'll do that I like to do it on the pearl side so you need to find any loop that is close to the yarn end insert your needle under that loop pull through but not to the end leave a bigger loop and then insert your needle into that loop and then you tighten that 
like this. And then I can weave in this end and cut the yarn. And that's it. After that, you just um, wash uh, the piece, dry it flat, and it's ready to go. All right, and this is the final um, result. I already washed and dried this um, dicky. So it turned out really, really nice. Uh, it's not very itchy, but slightly itchy. So be careful uh, if you're sensitive. And I think the result is uh, really, really, really good. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you have any questions on how to knit this dickie, please leave me a comment. Uh, all the links to materials and tools that I was using for this project you can find in the description box below. Uh, and if you're going to use uh, my instructions and make this dickie, then post it on Instagram. Please tag me. Here you can see uh, my Instagram account name. I really like to see what you guys do in following my uh, instructions. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.